the double D's for writers. What are they? Designers and deadlines. This episode of The Right Focus analyzes your novel's presentation, the so essential cover, and the numbers that rule your genre and manuscript. Not sure what I mean? Maybe this episode can help. Welcome to The Right Focus. We cover productivity, process, craft, and tools. Our podcast episodes last as long as it takes to fix a quick dinner, drive a short commute, or take a brisk walk. All through the summer months, we focus on the craft of writing novels and novellas and epics, from beginning ideas to prepping for publication, week by week by week. We're on to an analysis of your novel's presentation. Finally, you shout, yes! We're talking about cover designers and the deadline numbers. Our first analysis drained your creative impulses as you struggled to have great pacing. Wisdom says to let the critical side of your brain come out for playtime. Otherwise, the critical will pop out when you least want it to do so. Our first job is to connect with cover designers. If you're going for traditional publication, I wish you all the best. This step is not for you. However, if you will self-publish your novel, this step is extremely important. Readers see your cover first. Good covers entice readers to take a second and third look at your novel and hopefully click buy or borrow. You could risk making your own cover. The operative word is risk. Do you understand balance and proportion? Symmetry and juxtaposition? Chiaroscuro? You do? Then you've had a bit of artistic training. Graphic designers working in publishing understand how to blend different elements while keeping the various layers of the images in balance and proportion. They understand when color saturation is a good thing and when it can overwhelm. They understand when embellishments work and when to subtract the embellishments. They understand how font choices can disrupt the whole synergy of image and title. Do you understand all of those? I don't, and I don't want to take my time from writing to figure it out. That's actually the question to ask. Would I be better off writing? Remember Wibbo? If you decide to find a cover designer, you start with scanning the published books in the genre and subgenre to which your novel will belong. Ask these questions. What catches your eye? What doesn't? What dominant images do you see over and over and over? Like the running girl in a red coat. The ubiquitous cover for a couple of years. What kinds of dominant foreground images do you like? What fonts do you like? Which ones do you hate? Like, I hate Times New Roman, but I use it for my manuscripts. What is the ratio of image to font? Is the title blasted over the cover? Is that what you want? Check the small thumbnails on the online stores. Which covers attract the eye and can be seen? Which covers look amateurish? Which covers stand out? Study the designer's use of chiaroscuro. What is the light source? How are the shadows working? How does the designer use font choices? The best designers will use similar fonts for the title, series name, and author name. If the book offers sample pages or you can find the print edition in a bookstore, look on the back of the copyright page or in the acknowledgments by the author for the cover designer to be listed. You can run a Google search for book cover designers. Many designers offer inexpensive, pre-made covers. On the designer's websites, you should be able to see their portfolio of work for hire. If they don't have a portfolio, avoid them. Once you have generated a hot list of the top five designers, get into the nitty-gritty information. Price ranges for covers. This will sometimes make the decision for you. Price ranges for social media packages. You do need this for promotions. Price ranges for the addition of paperback covers. Limitations on your use of the cover image, and there should not be any. You should have control of the image after they finish. Designers' creation of branded covers for other authors in their portfolio. Branded covers have a common look across all the books in a series. And lead time for scheduling. A long lead time gives you an opportunity to save up for a better cover designer. Once you've narrowed down your search to the top three designers, determine how you will pay for the cover and anything else that you purchase. It's not wise to give out your credit card information, even if the designer has a lock on their URL that supposedly assures your personal information is safe. Millions worldwide use services similar to PayPal. And that's another consideration with your cover designer. Online payment services provide a guarantee for you and the designer, and the designer will not have to wait on banking laws for the money to be released to them. 
When you set up the payment service, you provide personal and payment information, so be careful about the service that you select. You provide contact information, usually your email address and a phone number. More and more online retailers are using these payment services, so you can practice with known retailers before you connect with a cover designer. Once the designer finishes the cover and receives your approval, the designer's office will send an invoice via the payment service to your email. You can click a link in the email to authorize payment, after which you will receive a payment receipt. Only then will come the package of images for which you contracted. Send an email with brief details of the cover, genre and such, and ask if the designer has availability soon. Ask if the designer uses a template or a questionnaire for the cover design information. Also ask when the designer would like to receive that information. The cover design template will confirm the details of the manuscript, the genre, and target audience. Professional cover designers are familiar with the standard covers for those. Also on the template will be the book's atmospheric quality and the setting. Beyond a description of your primary characters, you might also point to colors and specific items that you want on the cover. Most cover designers work with stock photos. If you browse around on Shutterstock, or deposit photos, or period images, you might find cover models that you can use. If you want a specific look for your cover models, you will have to contract with an illustrator. Once the illustrator provides you with an excellent quality digital image, you can forward that to the cover designer. But that takes weeks. You will also need to create a blurb of your novel. The blurb should be 250 to 300 words. Blurb, or book description, not only gives the designer the basic idea of the story, but it also serves for the back cover copy of the paperback, if you're going with one. Every book that is sold worldwide has an international standard book number called ISBN. In the U.S. of A., we purchased the ISBN from Bowker. In Great Britain, according to an internet search, is Nielsen UK ISBN Agency. If you are in a different country, just search for ISBN and your country. You will have to purchase separate ISBNs for each edition. One novel and ebook, and a second ISBN for the novel to be in paperback. While you cannot get a copyright on your novel until it is published, you can certainly explore the copyright agency for your country. After the designer, the other aspect of the manuscript to consider is the numbers that rule publishing. We've talked numerous times about word count and the power of increments. I won't say more on that, except to remind you to write a certain amount on a steady basis. Here is what's new. Anything at 40,000 words or more is considered a novel. A novella is 17,000 to 40,000 words. A novelette is 7,500 words to 17,500 words. And anything under 7,500 words is a short story. To determine your word count total, you need to know the standard length of a novel in your genre. Generally, and this is a big generally, word counts fall in these ranges and do not exceed 150,000 words. In the adult fiction market, trade fiction, which is what most people write, literary or commercial, is 90,000 words. Historical fiction runs at 100,000 words. Mysteries are usually 70,000 to 90,000 words. Romance is usually 50,000 to 100,000 words. Science fiction and fantasy, 90,000 words to 120,000 words. And new adult fiction, 50,000 to 80,000 words. In the children's fiction market, young children's picture books are about 32 pages. We've all seen children's picture book. Sometimes you don't have 20 words on a single page. Older children's picture books are about 48 pages. Children's chapter books, 1,000 to 10,000 words. Junior fiction, so-called middle grades, is 10,000 to 20,000 words. And young adult fiction is usually 40,000 words or more. Going forward, when you know the manuscript length you want, you can determine the increment of your goal, 50,000 or 70,000 or 90,000 or 100,000. Then divide into words per day, working five days a week. Remember to factor for when life happens. You get sick. Someone you have to care for gets sick. The boss makes you spend overtime. You get stressed. You have to pay bills and do taxes. You go on vacation because you're stressed. You need time for family and friends. A dozen more things could happen. 
What can you achieve? Can you achieve 500 words per day? That's the five paragraph essay for high school and early college. Remember, in a five day week, that's 2,500 words a week and 10,000 words per month, which is 50,000 words in five months. How about 700 words? 3,500 words a week, 14,000 per month, and 70,000 in five months. For 90,000, 4,500 words a week and 18,000 words per month. Going for the gold of 100,000 words? 1,000 words in five days is 5,000 a week and 20,000 a month. Just have to be extreme. 1,200 words over five days leads to 6,000 words per week and 24,000 words per month for a grand total in five months of 120,000 words. Here's the key. Work at your own pace, not someone else's. You know how much life controls your writing time. Squeezing out 500 words daily is still an achievement. Many new writers will advise you to dash through the draft, skipping the hard or boring parts. I can't stop you from doing this. Puzzlers and mosaics write the parts they like, leaving the parts they don't like for the end. Skipping results in two problems. First, writing all the good leaves you facing only the bad. With only the bad before you, you will procrastinate Chrono writers, those who write beginning to end, achieve goals faster because they don't procrastinate. Second, when you dash through and leave a sloppy mess filled with scene needed here or something clever goes here, you dread starting the cleanup. Write the best draft beginning to end. A reasonable daily word count gives you the time needed to think through the clever scenes and helps you create clean copy. Writing a clean copy first time will eventually become habitual and cut down on your revision work, which is always the goal. Like any craftsman builder of houses, we'll adjust as we go along, mixing common design elements and replacing them with fresher ideas. And that's the focus of our next episode, Revision. We've reached the harvest stage of the novel. We'll say everything in one episode, but harvest usually takes me much more than one week. I revise twice, then work in the corrections before I have enhancements. Then it's on to proofing, at least three rounds, and final corrections. It will seem fast, but it's not. Inspiration comes from an anonymous source. I found this in a book called For Writers Only by Sophie Burnham. Here it is from page 80 of the paperback edition. A master in the art of living draws no distinctions between her work and her play, her labor and her leisure, her mind and her body, her education and her recreation. She hardly knows which is which. She simply pursues her vision of excellence through whatever she is doing and leaves others to determine whether she is working or playing. To herself, she always seems to be doing both. Thanks for listening to The Right Focus, a podcast for writers at all of us, hosted by M.A. Lee, with the assistance of Remy Black and Edie Rooms from Writers, Inc. Books. All through the summer months, our focus is the craft of writing. We are discovering your novel. From beginning idea to prepping for publication, we'll work through the process stages of foundations to story, envisioning the story, analyzing story before, during, and after the draft, harvesting the story through revisions and enhancements, and prepping the story for publication. Many of these preps and guides are useful setups for the National Novel Writing Month in November. That's writing only, you know, no idea work. We can also use this information to solve issues with stories that we've abandoned. All those stories are crying in the wilderness. Time to rescue them with the right focus. Show notes for this and other episodes can be found at therightfocus.blogspot.com. Write to us at winkbooks at aol.com. Remember, whatever occurs, write on.